Hi, this is a video about how to teach a lesson from the Be Good People curriculum, specifically the core edition designed for tier one school-wide instruction, and specifically lessons for the K through three grade band. And we're looking at the main Be Good People website page right now. And the reason I start, started here is I wanted to explain there's basically three main ingredients we like to say for Be Good People. And I'll talk about each of them in this video. I'm gonna start with lessons, and that is the most rigorous structured element of the curriculum. And at elementary, schools typically, each grade level has a sequence where every week there's a skill of the week, and that is the lesson. And it's taught on Monday or Tuesday or both. It's, you know, it frames the instruction for the week. And it might be something like ignoring distractions, or responding to conflict, or using active listening. So it's very clear what we're talking about, and it's step-by-step -step instruction and application. Extension activities is a pretty general uh, term for um, worksheets, and read-aloud books, and YouTube videos, and just a, a whole you know, array of different materials that we use to just enrich the instruction. So if your you know, third grade level team is teaching these lessons, on a Monday or Tuesday, start of the week, and that is again kind of like the spine of your scope and sequence. These extension activities just get, you know, woven, they might be in your morning meetings throughout the rest of the week, for example. And community building is, well, these two lessons and extension activities, well, these two are content focused and they are, you know, directed at benchmarks from our SEL standards in Minnesota. Community building isn't really learning content focused. It's just getting to know you activities. So would you rather questions, icebreaker questions, games, etc. And without further ado, I'm just going to dive into, again, the, the core edition K through three. And your school hopefully isn't looking at this page on a day to day basis. This is just giving you all the content. Um, hopefully you're getting to these materials from more of a laid out scope and sequence, like I said, weekly schedule. Um, but I am going to click Ignoring Distractions just as a demo lesson. And I want to point out a couple of things as we're looking at the, the opening slide here. One is that, you know, it's called Ignoring Distractions, and that's what we would call like a skill label. And you can kind of see that in the bottom left corner. And we, we use that kind of consistent label all the way from K through 12. The skill steps and the, the explanation is going to evolve and get more sophisticated, of course, by the time we get to seniors in high school. But we really do like that consistent, you know, call a spade a spade. We're talking about ignoring distractions. That's something kindergartners need to know how to do all the way up to seniors in high school. So we just keep that consistent label. But what students are going to notice, you know, K through three students, is this bigger, um, more prominent, less fancy sounding, um, what if I get distracted? It's just one example, but we're, we're, we're just putting it more in their age level language. And um, but beneath it is a little explanation of the lesson. So I would just start, you know, imagine your students are, you know, circled around on a carpet. You're starting this. I'd say like, all right, today we're learning about what if we get distracted? And then I would just probably read exactly what's written below it to introduce the lesson. Um, what is in the bottom right corner here real quick is uh, you're going to see a little benchmark code. Um, so with the benchmark we're referring to here is a benchmark under the standard of self-management. There's five kind of core competency or standard areas and self-management is one of them. Um, but we didn't want to put self-management on here. It just felt, you know, kindergartners aren't going to wrap their heads around that phrase very easily. So we just tweaked these. So in this case, it's managing yourself. Um, and we did that for all five of the standards areas. But we have this cute little learning badge here. Um, and I'll get to that as we talk through the lesson. But there's some nice continuity through the lessons then of students seeing those consistent five learning badges. And then finally, in the bottom right corner, we just have, you know, this says lesson for community building activities like would you rather's, icebreakers, it'll say community building. Um, for extension activities, it'll say extension activities. So it kind of anchors you in what am I doing? What is this? Um, and then in the speaker notes, we have a link to share feedback. We do appreciate all feedback we receive on the curriculum. It, is, it has evolved so much since it started based on teacher feedback. Um, visit our website just takes you back to the main main good people page we were looking at before it takes you back here so you can get to everything 
Um, and then here, what's new, we highly recommend that, you know, at least a couple of instructional leaders in a school, maybe grade level team leads um, are subscribed to these updates so that they can filter out information about updates to the curriculum to their colleagues. And this is a good place to mention, you know, we're looking at the, you know, viewer version at the, of these slides. I can see all of them, right? Um, but if I was presenting this lesson to students, I would click uh, slideshow and go into full screen mode with this. I'm not going to do it right now because I think it's kind of handy for me to be able to reference all these slides over here. But for example, you know, on slide two, there's a little bit of animation on this slide. You know, they aren't going to, students aren't going to see this definition right away. You know, it just has this question, what does distraction mean? And if I go into full screen mode, you'll see a blank card here. And then I can click on my smart board and then the definition will appear. So there's not a ton of that, but that does happen in the lesson. So always make sure you're in, you know, presentation mode for your, for your lesson presentation. And then just talking about this slide, um, not all of the lessons are going to have something here like a little video or a definition. It's kind of on an as needed basis. So there are quite a few for K through three, quite a few lessons where there's a term like distraction where we wanna make sure students have a definition of it, key term right at the beginning. So we have a slide that looks similar to this. If there's a Sesame Street or another video we can access that helps explain what that means to students, we'll use it. Um, some lessons have like a short clip that's relevant to the lesson. Um, but if it's, you know, we, we add those attention getters as we can access them, but not every lesson will have them. But in this case, I kind of said it before, if there is a definition, I would just say, what does distraction mean? Does anybody know? And then I would say, like, do we need some help? And if they say, yeah, we might play the Sesame Street video. And I would say, like, all right, what do we think distraction means? I'd get a couple of ideas. And then finally, I'd click my smart board, reveal the definition and read it to the class. You know, a distraction is something that makes it hard to focus and pay attention. And what is always going to be in a lesson is a why slide or a rationale slide. We have these on every single lesson, K through 12. And I would say, like, why, why do you think it's important to know how to ignore distractions? And I, I'd hear ideas coming from the class. Um, I would read these couple here to the class and, and discuss them as much as I'm comfortable. So I'd say, like, so if we're good at ignoring distractions and being focused, we're going to get our own work done and we'll have more times to do things that we choose to do like free time and like talk about like, Oh, have you ever had that happen to you before? And then on the right side here, we have values. So you're going to see four value symbols. So I could handle this a, a number of different ways, but a really typical way would be to say, Oh, you know, there's a couple that there's a couple things that ignoring distractions helps us with. One is self-control. Who has an idea of how ignoring distractions, what that has to do with self-control? And then et cetera, I'd, I'd say, repeat the same thing for knowledge or cooperation or challenge. So you could say like, you know, ignoring distractions and being focused is a way you show self-control. You get more good at controlling yourself. Um, you have to ignore distractions in order to learn new things and, and become more knowledgeable. So just talking about helping students reflect on how this skill relates to values that they might hold. And now that we've established kind of the why, why is this important, we get into prior knowledge. So I'd say like students, you know, we need to use our brain power now, kind of that's what that symbol is getting at. So this is asking them to pretend they need to tell somebody else how to use the skill generally. And you're just asking them for any input they have about what would they tell that person to do? So it's getting at what these students already know about the skill. And then these K through three lessons jump right into step one. So we go step by step here. So step one of ignoring distractions is notice you're distracted. And then there's some text prompts there that I could read and expand on as much as I, I'm comfortable. Again, this curriculum isn't designed to be completely scripted. There's enough on the slide so that you could just literally read it if you had no prep time. Um, but the, the idea is there's a little bit of a skeleton there and then you can add on to it and, and embellish the discussion as much as you'd like to. And that kind of goes to step two, step three. So there's gonna be different numbers of steps um, for each of these skills. Generally for K through three, it's ranging from, you know, two steps on the low end to about five is the highest we get, I believe. 
Um, there's you see gifs on each of these, um, or is it gifs? You know, um, gifs or gifs on each of these uh, slides. Sometimes it's just static still photos, but we try and put some imagery on there because we've gotten feedback from teachers that it's more engaging. They like to have that vivid imagery for students. So we just talk through how we would how we would use each of these steps. And then we get quickly to application. So we have scenarios here. There's gonna be five scenarios in pretty much every lesson that you run into. And the goal here is kind of an I do, we do, you do. So with these five, and we put this little progress tracker on the bottom so you can kind of keep track so you don't lose track as the teacher of which scenario you're on at the moment. Um, but I would read the scenario. So let's like let's learn, let's practice fall or ignoring distractions. So you're working at your table on your math worksheet, and your table partner starts talking about her new puppy. And then if we're doing an I do, we do, you do, um, I might ask a student to come up to the front of the room and be my table partner talking about her new puppy. And because I want to be the modeler, I'm in a model ignoring distractions. So I might have the student kind of come up to me and say like, hey, start talking about your new puppy. And they start doing that. And then I say, okay, class, I'm, I'm noticing that I'm distracted. I can tell I'm distracted because I'm tapping my pencil and I'm looking over at her. And then I'm going to say to myself, I can focus on my work. And you might do like a choral responding thing with that. Um, and then, you know, model keep working. So you know, in this case, ignoring distractions is kind of a hard thing for people to see. So that's why as I'm going through it, I'm kind of saying a lot. Um, for other skills like resolving a conflict, for example, it's I, I probably wouldn't need to say as much or narrate what I'm doing as much, if that makes sense, because it's a little bit more interactive and social of a skill. In this case, ignoring distractions is all happening in my brain, which is why I'm having to narrate a little bit what I'm doing. Um, but yeah, if it's scenario one, like I'm trying to, I'm trying to model it um, and give the students a good role model, do a good job performing this skill, and then I'm going to gradually hand it off. So if I have five scenarios, you know, I might do another one where I'm the, I'm the modeler and I have a volunteer student or two come up to the front of the room and model with me. Um, but when we get to three, four, and five, I want to start having like a, a you do so I might call a couple of students, like two or three up to the front of the room, and instead of me being part of it, like your class is a pet hamster. During quiet reading time, the hamster decides to climb into the squeaky wheel and exercise. The noise is starting to distract you. So I might have a student come up to the front of the group and then coach them and let them act out the scenario and talk about what they're doing. Um, and generally speaking that's about as far as you're going to go when you get up to you know second grade third grade you might reach a level of maturity and independence where students can partner up and all you kind of say go and they all act out the scenario with a partner they're sitting next to um, k students are generally not that independent where you're able to just kind of release them to all do those partner activities and they'll stay on task and do it so that's why i, I talked more about bringing students up to the front of the room and kind of guiding their practice um, but like i said as students get older it might be more realistic to say okay everybody tap, grab a partner and you act out the scenario and then you might come back together and discuss Another thing just to mention that we've heard from, from teachers, sometimes if you have classroom puppets or stuffed animals, that can be a really fun way to, you know, in a cute, uh, engaging way, model some of these scenarios. So for example, if you just pref teacher preference or if you didn't have students available to volunteer for whatever reason, you could always use puppets or stuffed animals to model the scenario instead of using example students. So just, you know, get creative with it. There's just a lot of ways you could model um, and then coach students to practice the skill. And then finally, the last slide is always gonna say, you know, complete, it says lesson complete here because we were doing a lesson. And then it kind of summarizes what we learned about. So again, I said those learning badges for those five SEL standards. You're gonna see one of those on the end of every one of these lesson slides. And then you're gonna see those four values that we talked about. So you could just, throw this up there and not address it. You could throw it up there and I think just kind of re-summarizing, we learned about managing ourselves, about self-control, about knowledge, about challenge and cooperation. And you could just do it orally like that and then transition to your next activity. Um, we did design and I'll just 
get to it here. We designed this little learning log, which is super cute. Um, and it's kind of a packet a student could use throughout the school year. So they, you know, write their name, get to draw a picture of themselves. And then at the end of every lesson, they could, you know, if we learned about managing ourselves, color in a little coin for learning about that. And then each of the values that we learned about. So in this case, one of them was knowledge. So I'm just scrolling down to knowledge. There it goes, um, and color in a coin there for each of the values. So that's completely optional, but it's something a lot of you know, elementary teachers have expressed interest in just because it helps students kind of see their progress through these topics throughout the year. Um, you know, and it's explained on the website, but this isn't really meant to, if your school has like a school-wide incentive system, like tickets, for example, for your school-wide expectations, this isn't really meant to supplant that at all. Um, this is more meant for like each, each individual teacher could could use this however they like to. Like a really common example would be, you know, if we color in 10 coins this week, we'll do a dance party or we'll just do a dance party for every 10 coins that we color in. Um, so it's just more like informal incentives just to add a little bit of juice and meaning to, you know, the ritual of coloring these coins in. And I said I would go through not just lessons, but extension activities and community building. So why don't I do that quick? Um, going back here, instead of just opening up individual lessons, we have our extension activities on pages like this. So if your school is using one of our example, you know, week to week schedules for every one of your lessons, there's going to be a link that says extension activities that would take you to a page like this. And you can see there's just, these are the benchmarks, um, for SEL. And under each, underneath each one, we have these activities organized. We have them organized, these little um, bat, I don't know what to call these, these little graphics uh, represent kind of what format they're in. So these would be read alouds, it's a book with a little play sign. Um, these would be books you have to purchase or they might be in your school library, who knows. Um, these are worksheets, just discussion, videos with discussion, you get the idea. Um, another little feature here that we're just starting to grow is uh, academic integration ideas. So we just thought as long as you're getting pointed to these resources, which again, these are meant for dedicated, explicit SEL instruction time, like a morning meeting or a class connect, you know, we pause and we learn about it. Um, but, you know, when we're doing math or reading or science, um, any other curricular area, there's ways that we can promote SEL at all times. So there's just ideas down there that we're going to grow over time of how to do that. So those are extension activities. Let me just open up one for, for an example. So this is just a, a sing-along. So pretty common, like there's going to be a video and some discussion questions. So it just, you know, completely depends. That's why we organized it by this format, because like I said, this is a pretty loose category of materials. And then finally, community building activities. So your SEL schedule as a grade level might point to this page exactly. And this is just a growing bank of icebreaker questions, would you rather questions, games. So our icebreakers, I'll just use this as an example, are kind of broken into generally like four question packs, because we generally hear like that's a good amount of questions for a 20, 10, 15 minute morning meeting, just a couple of questions and you don't even have to get through them all. I know a lot of teachers really like that there's four because they don't get through them all, but they're able to just pick and choose or let the class choose like, hey, do we want to skip this question? And I didn't uh, comment on it with the extension activity, but like I said, every one of these closing slides is going to have that learning badge. Um, so for these community building ones, we talk about how we're practicing um, thinking of others, which is, you know, young kid code for social awareness. That's the standard we're working on. And then getting along with others is relationship skills. So we're, we're using and practicing those SEL skills by doing this community building activity. So even something as informal as just getting to know each other, you know, students are practicing those social awareness and relationship skills. 
And that's it. I really hope this has helped you get started or refresh yourself with Be Good People. And we hope you enjoy the K through three core edition and that have a great time with, with it with your students. Thank you so much.